Hey, what's going on, Guardians? My name is The Black Link. And earlier today, we got some interesting news, a neat little sneak peek at a story trailer for Destiny 2 Beyond Light that Bungie put out earlier today. I say sneak peek because it gives us a sneak peek at what exactly is going on in Beyond Light by giving us a look at some of the motivations for the new uh, antagonist, Aramis. We get to hear more from our old buddy, Varix. And as a part of the trailer, we even get to see how some of this new variety of Fallen with their new stasis-based powers are created. Now, if you haven't seen the trailer itself, there will be a link to it down in the description box below. Of course, we'll be playing it as part of this video as well. So, without further ado, this is the Destiny 2 Beyond Light story reveal trailer. We'll be coming back in at the end of it. Chains! For centuries, we have been bound by them. We have become pawns of our own devices. No longer! Darkness walks among us. We are all in great danger. My kind must survive. Please, send help. Where is the signal coming from? Here. Europa. Wait! Old friend, these powers, they are changing you. Aramis's presence on Europa is not happenstance. Obsession propelled her here. Our enemies stand no chance against this power. The great machine will finally know our pain. All right, and there we go. Short and sweet, but some really interesting narrative points there. Like I said earlier in the video, they show off kind of how this new brand of Fallen is being empowered. We've got a shard of the pyramids there. They seem to stand underneath it. They get a shard of stasis power for themselves, and suddenly they've got ice power. I would expect that that's probably going to be similar to how we as Guardians are going to be gaining and using that power as well. Now, something that's interesting to note here is that Aramis is kind of listing out her grievances against the Traveler itself. She talks about taking revenge against the Great Machine, which we know from Destiny lore is what the Fallen refer to the Traveler as. Additionally, she also talks about how the Fallen, at least her Fallen, have been in chains, that they've been slaves to their own devices. And there we see a Servitor starting to line itself up behind her. I get the feeling she stabs the Servitor and destroys it. As we know, uh, the Fallen create Servitors as kind of like an homage to the Traveler. Many of the Fallen houses also worship the Servitors that they build. That's where like Sepix Prime and like the Devil's Lair and all that kind of stuff came from. And so the narrative point here is that this group of Fallen, which looks like it might be including some remnants from the House of Judgment, are breaking those chains and moving away from the use of Servitors like that. Or at least the reverence of them. Since we know these Fallen still use Servitors, we've seen them in the, the gameplay trailers. They still fight alongside of them. But still, pretty interesting lore bits there if that's where the story happens to be going. Later on, we get to hear more from Varix himself, warning that Aramis's actions are leading to a great danger for everyone there. 
We even get to see Varix interact directly with Aramis in the trailer, calling her his old friend. We know Ara at least a little bit about Aramis. She's known as the Kel of Darkness, formerly Aramis the Ship Stealer. She was a fallen Kel and a former Baroness from the old House of Devils, way back in Destiny 1 who eventually got thrown into the prison of elders by the Queen of the Reef, and then, of course, thanks to some of the actions of our own buddy Varys and the Scorn, was eventually set free in the jailbreak. Eventually, she rallied up some members of the Old House of Devils, the House of Wolves, and the House of Dusk, and basically rallied them over to Europa, where she pledged her allegiance to the pyramids and became the Kell of Darkness. So that might be the reasons for some of the connections there between Aramis and Varix. I'm certainly sure that we're going to be hearing more about that prison break moving forward. But that's pretty much the biggest bits of information to drop from this trailer. Again, this is more one for the lore heads out there with the implications of what's going to be happening in the story of Destiny 2 Beyond Light. But it isn't the last thing I wanted to talk about in this video. As many of you who play PvP in Destiny, you got you crucible heads out there probably heard over the weekend... Bungie made a pretty neat move that has caused quite a bit of a stir for the Crucible community. A few days ago, Bungie took legal action against the cheating platform software Perfect Aim, which is the main bit of software used for hacking in Destiny 2. These hacks are primarily Crucible based. They allow you to see people through walls, to have instant auto tracking, to give you infinite heavy, infinite super, uh, infinite flight. It's kind of some of the crazy stuff you've seen if you've been playing any amount of Crucible games, whether it's Trials, Comp, or just normal quick play on Destiny 2 for the PC. And it's finally, finally been taken down. If you head over to the Destiny 2 section of the Perfect Aim website, you get this wonderful message saying, This product is no longer available. A claim has been made by Bungie Incorporated, suggesting that this product violates the game's license agreement. Furthermore, a demand was made that we cease and desist from selling this product. We won't comment on whether these claims are justified or not. They are. But we have decided to comply with this demand regardless. We are sorry for any inconvenience caused to our customers. And there we go. Ding dong. The cheat is dead. At least Perfect Aim is for right now with Destiny 2. Of course, this is fantastic news for the game, and it follows news of Activision basically doing the same thing when it comes to their Call of Duty franchise. They have been cracking down on cheating programs by starting legal action against the companies and websites that make and sell those products. So hopefully with this change here, this threat of legal action and with Perfect Aim being basically taken out of the picture when it comes for Destiny 2. And again, this was, I think, the number one hack used in Destiny 2. Hopefully that means we can have way more integrity in the Crucible and way less frustrating experience with cheaters. I know I've run into it a lot. You know, I play primarily on PC when it comes to D2 now, and it was a huge problem that was only getting bigger as more people were learning what Perfect Aim was. Anyways, I just wanted to let you guys know that that happened over the weekend if you happen to miss out on it. If you play on the PC, hopefully you've noticed some much more fun and fair Crucible lobbies. But alright Guardians, that's it for the news we had for this video. What do you think about the story trailer for Beyond Light? Where do you think that story is going and how do you feel about the perfect aim changes? Be sure to leave me your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest stuff we're putting out. But alright Guardians, that's it for this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I am the Black Link. You Guardians, stay frosty.